This is uh, video number 42 from digital-university.org. Um, in this video, we're going to consider some examples of using the superposition technique. And this is now when you have a circuit that has one or more voltage sources or one or more current sources or has a combination of voltage and current sources. Um, in past videos, we have used the super node technique and the super mesh technique to try to analyze uh, circuits that have a current and a voltage source. Sometimes the situation is simple enough that you don't have to resort to those techniques. And we can use what's called the superposition method. And we'll try to show some examples of that uh, here in this and the next uh, two or three videos. Incidentally, if you just found us on YouTube, if you can go to the uh, website, there we have the playlist for all the videos that we have so far on electrical circuit analysis. Okay, um, when you have multiple sources, sometimes just by looking at the circuit, you can determine what's going on without having to um, engage in any type of fancy techniques. For example, suppose we had this. say a 30 volt source with a 6 ohm resistor and let's say that here we have a current source of 3 amps and we want to know what is the current in the 6 ohm resistor. Well we look at this and we see well this is in parallel with that voltage source. So the voltage drop across this resistor has to be 30 volts regardless of what current source is in there. And if that's going to have a voltage drop here then of 30 volts, then it's going to have to have a current of 5 amps. So that we can tell just by looking at it. This right here is totally irrelevant as to determining what current is going to go through that resistor. Okay, let's take a look at another example that isn't quite so trivial. Suppose that we have a circuit that looks like this. And let's just put a couple of voltage sources in. And let's say this is a 24 ohm resistor. Here's a 12 ohm resistor. There's a 4 ohm resistor. So this is 54 volts. And this is 48 volts. And we want to find I4. Now what we can do is look at the circuit with just one voltage source, find out what the current is, and then eliminate that voltage source. Let's say we're going to take this out, and just have one voltage source, find the current in the resistor, and then remove this voltage source, and keep this one, and find the current going through the resistor, and then just add up the two results. So let's say that we're going to remove this voltage source. We would represent that schematically then as this. Because now we just have a conductor. There is no voltage drop here. And we look at this and we can see that the 12 ohm resistor and the 4 ohm resistor are in parallel to each other. Here comes the current here. And then once the current reaches this point, some of it can go here to the 12 ohm resistor, some of it can go around here to the 4 ohm resistor, so it gets split up between these two parallel resistors. So the equivalent resistance, that equals 12 times 4 divided by their sum, that's 16, so that equals 48 divided by 16, 
that's 3 ohms. So here then, it looks like this with the equivalent resistance, 24 ohms and 3 ohms. And this is 54 volts for the voltage source. So here then, the source current Obviously, that's going to be 2 amps, 54 divided by 27. So now we can go back to here, and we can say, well, the current that's coming into here is 2 amps. Here we have two parallel resistors, the 12 ohm resistor and the 4 ohm resistor. How much current goes through? the 4 ohm resistor, and we know how to do that using the current divider principle for parallel resistors. I4 will equal the value of this resistor, 12, divided by their sum, 12 plus 4 is 16, times the amount of current that is entering those parallel resistors, and that's 2 amps. and that equals one and a half amps. And that one and a half amps then is going in this direction through the resistor. Okay, now what we can do is redraw the circuit again. and we'll eliminate this voltage source. So now it's going to look like this. And this is our 24 ohm resistor, the 12 ohm resistor, and here the 4 ohm resistor. Now we have our 48 volt source. Okay, and we're still interested in what is the current that goes through this resistor right here. Now we look at it, we'd say, well, the current leaves like this. It's going to come to this junction. Some of it's going to be split. Some of it will go down through this resistor. Some of it will go through this resistor. So clearly, these two resistors are in parallel with each other. They split the current up between them. So here then the equivalent resistance that will equal 12, 12 times 24 divided by their sum 36 and this goes into here three times so that equals 8. So now, here we have this situation. Here's our battery. This we can replace with a single resistor of 8 ohms. So this is 8. This is 4. This is 48. So here the source, the current source, that is equal to 48 divided by the sum of these 12, that equals 4 amps. So if we go back to here, the current, the source current then is 4 amps. So if there's 4 amps leaving this battery, then down here on the bottom, there has to be 4 amps returning to it. So that means for I4, we have 4 amps in this direction. 
so when we have only the 48 voltage source, that produces a current through this resistor of 4 amps in this direction. When we had the 54 ohm one, this, that produced a current through I4 of 1.5 amps in this direction. So now, when both of them are present, then the current through I4 is going to equal 4 amps minus 1.5 amps. So that's going to give us 2.5 amps going in this direction. when both voltage sources are present, a net of two and a half amps. So all we did was we just simply looked at the circuit with only one voltage source, found out what the current was, and then did it for each one independently, and then added the results together. And that's the superposition uh, principle. Um, it's a neat thing to use when it's easy to find the equivalent resistance. Notice that in each case, when we had just the 48 voltage source, or when we had just the 54 voltage source, in each situation, we were left where we had to find an equivalent resistance to do our analysis. Well, if you're working with a problem, and you're eliminating either a current source or a voltage source, and you come to the part of the problem where you have to find the equivalent resistance. If it looks something like this, there is no equivalent resistance for this that we can find for a series parallel combination. So if you come across that kind of um, brick wall, then that means you can't just use a superposition principle. You're going to have to use either a super mesh current or a super node current um, to do your analysis with. And incidentally, in the uh, beginning videos in the playlist, we had several examples of semi-complicated uh, arrangements of resistors where we were able to determine the equivalent resistance. So you might find it useful to uh, go back and take a look at those videos. Let's just try one more um, example in this video. Suppose we have a current in a voltage source. Say we have a voltage source, a resistor, another resistor, this is 12, this is 6, and now let's put a voltage source in here. say 9 amps. Let's say this is 36 volts. And we want to find, whoops, we're on a camera range. Let's consider this problem. Uh, current source, an amperage source, and two resistance. And let's say we want to find I6. So what we can do is, to start with, we'll eliminate the current source. Now, what you saw us do just a few minutes ago, when we eliminated a voltage source, you can just have a conductor. There is no voltage drop now. If we have a current source, or something is putting current into a circuit, then the way to eliminate it is just to have a broken circuit. So, let's take a look at this. And let's say that we eliminate the current source. So then we're going to have the battery, or our voltage source. Our two resistors. 
and this is just open now. So here we have then 36 volts, 12 ohm, and 6 ohms. So here that's going to give us obviously a resistance of 18. So that means we're going to have 2 amps of current flowing through the resistor. Now let's take a look at it where we eliminate the voltage source. So now we're going to have this is 12, this is 6, and the way to eliminate the voltage source is just to have a conductor. Now there is no potential drop across here. So now what we want to do is we want to find here this is 9 amps and we want to know what is I6. So here we have 9 amps of current coming in and we have two resistors 12 and a 6 one, they're both in parallel with each other. When it comes here, obviously it's going to get split between them. So to define the current through this resistor, we use the current divider principle. And that will equal the value of this resistor divided by the total, the sum of them, 6 plus 12, that's 18 times the amount of current that's coming into these parallel resistors, that's 9, and that is equal to 6 amps, and that is going down. So here, through the 6 ohm resistor, we have 6 amps. So, from the current source that gives 6 amps in this direction with just the voltage source it gives us 2 amps in this direction put them both together like we had here and that gives us 8 amps going through the resistor okay um, that's it then for this video just wanted to give some basic demonstrations of the technique. Uh, come back and join us for the next video and we'll try and tackle some maybe uh, some more complicated examples. So come back, join us for um, that video and we'll try and tackle some more complicated problems.